I'm Tim Maudlin, professor of philosophy at New York University. I specialize in philosophy of science and particularly in the foundations of physics. So where did everything come from? Where did all of this come from? That's a question that everyone has asked, that humans have asked throughout the ages, and have tried to answer in various ways. We find ourselves in the world, we look around, there's all kinds of structure. There's a structure on the earth and a larger structure in the skies. And we have to ask, where did it all come from? How did things come to be the way they are? Humans have always asked questions like that and tried to answer them in various ways. The story of the entire physical universe is cosmology, because the entire physical universe is the cosmos. And through religion, through philosophy, through science, we've tried to come to grips with these sorts of questions. We're going to be talking today about what some of those answers are and how they've changed through the course of human history. The first attempts to account for the entire universe were given in mythology and in religion, and they have different structures. One example is uh, given by the Chinese sage Lao Tzu, writing in the Tao Te Ching. About this he wrote, There was something featureless, yet complete, born before heaven and earth, silent, amorphous, it stood alone and unchanging. We may regard it as the mother of heaven and earth, not knowing its name, I style it the way. So according to Lao Tzu, things started from this entirely unstructured state, a state that didn't have the beautiful galaxies, the stars that we see today. Something had to happen to change it from this amorphous state into the structured state, and he has something to say about that as well. The way gave birth to unity. Unity gave birth to duality. Duality gave birth to trinity. Trinity gave birth to the myriad creatures. The myriad creatures bear yin on their back and embrace yang in their bosoms. They neutralize these vapors and thereby achieve harmony. So somehow, from this one undifferentiated mass, there came to be two, then three, then many. We can call this idea birth from chaos, that the universe started out in some kind of unstructured state and then transitioned into the structure we see now. How exactly that transition occurred is going to look a little different depending upon who's telling the story. A different kind of account can be found in the Hindu tradition. There, instead of starting out with chaos with undifferentiated stuff and transitioning into structure, you have cycles. The universe began, the universe we're aware of began in a certain way and goes through a kind of birth and death. The cycles in the Hindu cosmology last for 4,320,000 years and are divided further into four epochs, and those epochs are divided even further. But the, they start out, grow, and then decay, and then end, and the ending of one of these periods becomes the beginning of the next. So you go through cycle after cycle after cycle of birth, growth, death, rebirth. We can call that a cyclic cosmology, and that could go on back in time forever. The third kind of idea is illustrated in the biblical story of creation. In that story, instead of starting with some undifferentiated mass, you start with nothing at all. And God creates ex nihilo, right, from nothing, the entire material world, already structured, already in a form very similar to what we see today. That happened at a certain period of time, and the material world only has a finite lifetime. If you go through the story of the Bible and try and calculate backwards when the universe began, you can arrive at a number. Uh, Bishop Usher came to the number 4004 BC, 
And you say, it was then that everything started. And we can call that the theory of the finite past. So we have three possibilities so far. Birth from chaos, cyclic cosmology, and a finite past.